What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the build. Today we're going to do some mechanical work and I've actually already started on her, but we're going to be installing an air ride system on the back of this 2500 Suburban. Now you may be wondering why we're going to install an air ride system. Why don't we just install a new leaf pack or add a leaf to the rear suspension here? And the main reason is that this build is all about functionality and utility. This fridge assembly in the lower box, as well as this drawer assembly, are completely removable from this vehicle. So this vehicle can go back to a nine passenger vehicle at any point in time, just by removing a couple bolts and sliding the stuff out. If we were to install an Adelief pack or a Deaver setup or anything like that, it would make this thing so unbearably rough to drive that it, it just wouldn't be worth it. With the air ride system, it gives us the ability to carry this extra weight, support it with the airbags. But then again, if we pull these out and the, the suspension picks back up, we can deflate the bags and bring it back to factory original ride. So it gives us a lot more versatility when we're using this vehicle. The other thing it'll allow us to do is actually increase the pressure even more when we hook up a tow trailer to the back of this thing. Um, this vehicle is used to pull multiple uh, trailers for for its daily duties and also when it's going to events and shows, it's pulling a, a cargo trailer. So it does see a lot of weight use and this truck has a 9,600 pound towing capacity. So we wanna, we wanna be able to fully utilize that. Now, this airlift ride control system is not like the ones that you see for the Chevy Silverados and the Rams and the Ford F, uh, F250s and that. It doesn't have a 5,000 pound capacity. These things are only rated for about 2,000 pounds, um, which is still quite a bit if you really think about it. But the reason that they're only rated for 2,000 pounds is because of the small space that they have to fit into. There's only about seven and a half inches between the inside face of the tire and that frame rail. So what Airlift did was they made a four inch uh, diameter bag that fits in there. And because that bag is only four inches in diameter, it can only support up to 2,000 pounds. We actually lucked out. We ordered a kit for 2010 and we're bolting it on right now and everything is lining up perfectly. So as you can see here, I've already got the upper bracket mounted and the lower bracket mounted on the driver's side. We're gonna go through a full setup on the passenger side and I'll show you guys how we install that and kind of show you how to line everything up and mark everything. One really cool kit about this ride control kit is the special tool that they give you to help align the brackets. So you basically get this plastic dowel rod. This makes installation really, really, really nice. Honestly, I wish I had this when I did my Dodge Ram. So it goes without saying that there's a little bit of prep that you gotta do before you tackle this job. The first thing being jack the truck up, chalk the wheels, install jack stands, that way you're working safely. The next thing you need to do is you need to feel around the backside of your frame and make sure that there aren't any lines uh, hydraulic lines, brake lines, fuel lines, anything that's going to get snagged or hit by the drill bit or the bolts that are going through it. Now, I've already checked that on this truck and we're clear. The one thing I do know that we need to move is this wire right here actually mounts right to the frame right here on a bracket. And that is for the ABS system. And that's going to have to be moved because that's exactly where the bracket's going to sit on this truck. So with that out, you can set that off to the side like that. Okay, to assemble the bracket, you need the special tool and then also the large bolt that comes with the kit. This is actually the same bolt that's going to mount to the bottom of the airbag. We're going to put the washer on that, extend that through the, the bracket here. It's snug and then we're just going to back it off a little bit so that way we can slide it back and forth in the, in the uh, slot here. Just like that. The other side of this is going to go through the top hole here. And I've got this jam nut set exactly to where it was set on the other side of the truck. So all we should have to do is just lay this in there and it should be right on the money. Thread that down and just like that, we have our assembly. We're gonna go ahead and pull our fender liner back here, slide the upper bracket up underneath. I'm gonna set these two tabs on either side of the spring pack here. And we're gonna pull our ABS sensor out of the way. And then this hook right here is gonna sit over the U-bolt on the spring pad. Remember, we got it in the slot here and we're gonna push it all the way up against the frame right there and take a look at where we're at. Before I do anything else, I'm gonna mount the lower bracket to the spring pack. So we're gonna use the supplied U-bolt and clamp. Slide that on there. 
with the nylock nuts and washers. Okay, with our lower perch installed, now what we need to do is make sure that none of our bolt holes are actually gonna be on the radius of the frame. And this corner hole up here is right on the radius. So what we're going to do is drop this lower nylock nut down and lower the whole assembly a little bit lower, try to get that bolt hole away from there. Okay, so we had to make a modification on this side already. Uh, this side of the frame is just slightly different than the passenger side. So all I did was just remove the nylock nut from the bottom, which gave me about an eighth of an inch of uh, more clearance here and dropped us down below that radius. So right here is completely acceptable. Um, it's gonna be a little bit different than what the other side is, uh, but it's not gonna make that much of a difference, honestly, when we mount it. As long as these are not on the radiuses of the frame, according to the kit, it's and, and this is lined up, everything's gonna work as designed. So it's not that much of an issue to have to do that. So the next thing we need to do is we need to center punch a hole, and then we have to drill it and put a bolt in. And they want you to start with one of the lower holes that are center punch. And we're using a 3 8 drill bit. Slide it into the hole. And then we're gonna take our washer and our nylock nut, and we're gonna install that on the back side here. With one lower bolt loosely tightened in place, we're going to now center punch the other bolt. Again, we want to make sure that the bracket is completely flat against the frame. Now that we have our second lower hole drilled, we need to remove the uh, alignment fixture here. So to do that, I'm going to take the upper nut off. Then using a three quarter inch wrench, I'm going to hold the bottom and I'm going to spin our alignment tool off the bolt until it comes free. Just like that. And then we're going to tip the bracket upward and then remove the tool. Now I can take my second bolt, put it in the hole like that and tighten it up. Now that the two lower bolts are bolted in and the bracket is firmly against the frame, it goes without saying the only other thing that we have to do now is center punch the two upper holes, drill those and put the hardware in for that. And I'll go ahead and do that real quick and come back to you guys. Once we've got everything bolted loosely into place, now we're gonna go back and torque everything to spec. The U-bolt clamp that holds the lower perch to the, the uh, spring pack, those nuts get torqued to 16 foot-pounds, and then the bolts that hold the upper perch to the frame are to 20 foot-pounds. And when you do the lower perch, this U-bolt, you wanna do them evenly so it draws up nice and square. Okay. Now we need to install our airbag, and obviously this is way too compressed here for this to fit in here. Pull that liner back out, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to get this lower bolt started first, and then we'll fold the bag up, like this. And before we inflate this, we're gonna have to try to straighten this bag out some, but this should at least let me get this started. And then we're gonna install this through the upper hole where that tool went. And again, like I said, before we can inflate it, the bag can't be like this because what's going to happen is it's actually going to inflate and it's not going to inflate upward. It's actually going to swell out to the side, could burst the bag. So for that, I have a trick. So because the weight of the truck is sitting on the axles and the axles are sitting on these jack stands, it's basically like having the tires installed in the vehicles. And you can see how the bag is crushed in on this side. So we can inflate it that way. So the little trick I'm gonna use is a farm jack in the receiver hitch, and I'm going to lift the rear of the vehicle while the axle is still supported by the jack stands. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna open up the clearance and stretch those bags out so that way I can properly inflate them and check them for leaks. Once we have air pressure in them, I can relieve the pressure on the farm jack and let it sit squarely on those bags again. Using a farm jack can be a dangerous operation or a high lift jack if you're not properly trained on how to use it. And also you notice that I have set the lifting pad into the receiver. I'm not lifting on the receiver hitch itself or the ball. I'm lifting squarely on the receiver hitch assembly that's attached to the frame.
One thing I should have mentioned before jacking the back of the truck up is you want to install your nylock nut or your nylon nut on top of the airbag there and then you're fitting and then cut your hoses. I just basically folded them in half and cut them to equal lengths. We still have to run them on the frame here, but at least this is gonna allow me to inflate the bags and check them. Also, you can notice with the back end of the vehicle jacked up, the bags are stretched out to the point where I can actually safely inflate them without worrying about damaging them. So they are tight now at the top, but they are still loose at the bottom here. And that's done on purpose because this bag is gonna position itself um, on this pad once we inflate it and I can move it back and forth just to make sure that it's sitting where it needs to be. To inflate the bags, I don't actually own an air compressor for my garage. So we're actually gonna use the power wagon to fill it up. And this is gonna give you a glimpse into the future of the Suburban because we're gonna be installing the exact same setup. We're gonna be putting a York compressor under the hood of the Suburban. So again, we're only gonna put a light amount of air in. Make sure that bag inflates properly and straight, like it is. So right there, I probably have about 12 to 15 PSI. And I'm going to take the bottom here and make sure that this bag is straight and it's perpendicular to the leaf pack here. So right about there. And then I'm gonna take my wrench and tighten the lower bolt and then that'll be set, and then we can air them up to 60 PSI and check them for leaks. So now with the back of the truck lowered back down, the weight is sitting on the airbags. Like I said, there's probably only about 12 to 15 PSI in these bags right now. We're gonna inflate them up to 60 and then we're gonna make some Dawn dish soap and some water sprayed all over the system and check for leaks. And that's pretty much the end of the installation other than routing these hoses to wherever we wanna be able to fill them up. And then I have to figure out a place to mount these, whether I drill a hole into the side of the bracket or drill another hole in the frame here. Um, I just have to mount that ABS sensor somewhere where it can travel and cycle with the suspension. All right, so that's how we install the air ride suspension in the back of the Suburban. It's gonna help out a lot carrying the weight and help with the ride quality of this truck. Give us the versatility that we're looking for. That's it, and you guys got a sneak peek into the next video. So tune in next time to see the installation of that York compressor.